Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number five from the October 2023 International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P4 paper. And here we have a question about this strange looking curve. It almost looks like a normal distribution curve for those who've done S1. It says um, figure two shows a sketch of a curve C with the equation y cubed minus x squared plus 4x squared y equals k. <clears throat> where k is a positive constant greater than 1. Find dy dx in terms of x and y. So basically this first part of the question is about what's called implicit differentiation. So we have to find what dy dx is in terms of x and y. So um, dy dx is when you differentiate a function. Now a lot of people when they see something like this, they say how are we going to find dy dx? We have to make it say y equals first and then we can say dy dx equals and differentiate the other side. But this is something where the equation is not given as y uh, as some function of x um, you know, explicitly. You have an implicit function where you've got y cubes and x squared and you can't really make y for example the subject of this very easily. Okay, You could make x the subject of this quite easily. Okay, and you could use you could find dx dy for example, but it's going to be complicated. You're going to have k's in there. You're going to have it's going to be very complicated, right? You have square roots in there and stuff. So there's a very easy way to do differentiation um, called implicit differentiation, where you have to understand something very important. Now a lot of people don't understand what implicit differentiation is all about, and they just memorize what to do and they don't understand where it comes from. Now maths is something which has some set procedures that we need to understand and follow and that will help you understand what's going on and every step you won't be like in the dark somewhere thinking that some you know weird magical stuff is happening okay it's all very logical so basically when we are when we have y equals for example 3x um, say cubed plus say uh, 4x squared minus 2 and we find we normally say okay dy dx this is what we normally say we say dy dx is equal to 9x squared plus 8x and the constant goes all right and we leave it like that that's dy dx and that's perfectly fine you've been doing that since p1 some of you do it in igcse now okay so that's perfectly fine no problem whatsoever okay however however actually what's happened is we have differentiated both sides with respect to x so we've taken this this side of the equation we differentiated it with respect to x and we've taken this side of the equation and we've differentiated this side with respect to x what we've done to one side we did exactly the same to the other side okay what we did to one side we did exactly the same to the other side and furthermore okay we can we can call this dy dx now because when you differentiate y with respect to x you get dy dx and we're going to go into more detail about that in a minute but what we're actually doing also here is we're differentiating and for differentiated integration this works you can differentiate each term separately so you have differential of 3x squared with respect to x plus the differential of 4x squared with respect to x plus the differential of minus 2 with respect to x Okay, so that's actually these lines here. We don't write them down. Okay, we don't write them down. Okay, but we've been basically doing this since we did since we started differentiation. That's exactly what we did. We're doing. Okay. Now, if you understand that that's what we're doing, you'll understand what to do when you're solving a question like this because we can differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to x. Again, I'm not. I'm. I don't. I would not write this down in my real question, but I'm just showing you how what we did here. And what we're going to do here is the same thing. So you have we're going to differentiate y cubed minus x squared plus 4x squared y with respect to x. And we're also going to do the same thing on the other side, differentiate k with respect to x. Okay, which means we're differentiating each of these terms separately with respect to x. We're differentiating x squared with respect to x, and we're differentiating. 4x squared y with respect to x and this is going to give you of course I'll just write it like this for now differentiating k with respect to x so we're actually in differentiating every term separately with respect to x and then we're going to 
continue and actually differentiate so 3y squared and now we're going to explain that in a minute okay what exactly happens there but that's basically how you end up differentiating that then you've got to differentiate each of these terms with respect to x and then you you'll be able to find your answer okay now so basically what i'm trying to say here is you just differentiate each term individually with respect to x so we're going to do this now in the the way that we would normally write down that's just that's just uh, by way of introduction to make you understand what we're doing so we're going to differentiate y cubed with respect to x now when you differentiate a function okay like if you have for example a function and inside it you have another function okay and you want to differentiate that function okay so you differentiate the main function and then you multiply by the differential of what's inside it. Okay, so for example, if you had something like 3x squared plus 2 to the power of 3, and you want to differentiate this, you first you differentiate the main function, so it's like something to the power of 3. So you do 3 times that same thing as it is, take 1 from the power, and then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 6x. You end up with 18x times 3x squared plus 2 to the power of 2. So you multiply by the power, you take one from the power, and then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. So we know that y is some function of x. So when we differentiate y cubed, so we start off with, we have y cubed minus x squared plus 4x squared y equals k. So if you differentiate y cubed, it's like the y is what's inside this bracket right so you multiply by the power and you take one from the power but then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function so you have to multiply by the differential of y with respect to x which is dy dx so you always write when you have when you when you differentiate something in terms of y and you are multiple when you differentiate in terms of x or with respect to x and you know y is a function of x then you differentiate it like take in this case multiply by the power take one from the power then you multiply by dy dx you always multiply by dy dx in this case you're differentiating x squared with respect to x you're going to get 2x here you're going to have plus four times now here we have like a product of two separate functions i'm going to take the four out and keep that separate but x squared times y so here we're going to use what's called the product rule which you learn in p3 of course things that you learn in p3 apply in p4 a lot especially trig and differentiation integration so one of those products i'm going to call u that's going to be my x squared and the other one i'm going to call v that's going to be my y so we have u dash which is a differential of x squared which is going to give you 2x and we have v dash which is a differential of y with respect to x which is going to be if you differentiate this you're going to get one but then dy dx you have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function it's like you have y to the power of one y is inside the function so when you differentiate it, you're going to have 1 times the same function to the power of 0 times the differential of what's inside it. So you end up with dy dx. That's why when you differentiate y, you get dy dx. You can think of it like that if you want to. So now we multiply these two together. So we have 2xy plus, you multiply those together, you have x squared times dy dx. Most people will write them the other way around. You'll see that probably because most people do it this way first i like to do it that way first to be consistent with the um even with the quotient rule anyway if you differentiate k with respect to x k is now a positive constant so that means it's going to give you zero if you differentiate any constant it's going to give you zero so that's going to be zero here in this so now we have um differentiated every term with respect to x but we want to find dy dx that means we want to make dy dx the subject of all of this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to first expand the bracket so i have 3y squared dy dx minus 2x plus 8xy plus 4x squared dy dx equals 0. Now I'm going to keep the dy dx terms on one side. So I have 3y squared dy dx plus 4x squared um, dy dx equals, and if you, sub, if you add 2x and subtract x, 8xy, you have 2x minus 8xy on the other side take out dy dx as a common factor 
So we can then make that the subject. So you have 3y squared plus 4x squared equals 2x minus 8xy. And then finally, the final step is to divide both sides by this uh, product, this factor of um, 2y, uh, this, multi this thing that's multiplying dy dx. So you have 2x minus 8xy over 3y squared plus 4x squared. There's nothing common that you can cancel. And there we have the expression for dy dx, which is the gradient function for this. Okay, so that's five part A done. And now for part B. So we're told here that the point P lies on the curve C. This is the point P. The normal to C, which is this line here, has equation y equals x as shown in figure 2. Find the value of k in our equation. All right, so a normal to a curve passes through the curve um, at the same point as the tangent to the curve at that point. And what is the tangent? A tangent is a straight line which has the same gradient of the curve at the point where it touches it. The normal and the tangent are perpendicular to each other. So this is the normal and this is the tangent. Now I know that the gradient of the tangent times the gradient of the normal is going to give you negative 1. They are negative reciprocals of each other. So if I know the gradient of the normal, then I know the gradient of the tangent. And um, the gradient of the tangent, I know the gradient of the normal. Now, we know that the normal to C has equation y equals x, all right, which is this line over here. Find the value of k. So that means that the gradient of the tangent to the curve is going to be minus 1. Why? Because it's the negative reciprocal of y equals x. This is y equals 1x. The gradient of the normal is 1. Therefore, the gradient of the tangent is minus 1. So the gradient of the tangent is minus 1. So therefore, we can say dy dx must be equal to minus 1. Okay, dy dx must be equal to minus 1. And um, so not this k, I'm saying dy dx is equal to minus 1. We know that k is a positive constant, as I told us here. All right, k is a positive co constant greater than 1. So you know that basically k is um, greater than 1. All right, so we know that from the statement in the first question. That might help us if there's a, a number of possible values of k. But we know for now, now we know dy dx is equal to 1. So I know that dy dx is given by what we found earlier, okay, which is this. This is dy dx. Okay, and I know that's equal to negative 1. So I can say that 2x minus 8xy over 3y squared plus 4x squared is definitely equal to minus 1. Okay, so I know that for sure. All right, and what else do we know? Okay, so that's one thing that we know. Now, can we find the coordinates of the point P? If we can find the coordinates of the point P, that might help us also to help in solving uh, this problem. Okay, so the coordinates of the point P. Let's, let's first wor work out what this leads us to. So we have 2x minus 8xy is equal to, we're going to have minus 3y squared minus 4x squared. Okay, so we can say here, uh, we have, let's say, 4x squared plus 3y squared um, plus 2x minus 8xy equals 0. So that's like one equation we formed, well, however that will help us. And that's from the fact that the gradient or dy dx is equal to minus 1 at the point P. Can we find the coordinates of the point P? Um, well, we know that at P, y equals x. Okay, and so we know that the gradient of that point is minus 1. So let's have, have a look if we can find the... All right, so we know that the y and the x coordinates are the same at P. And I also know that the equation okay, of this curve is given by this. That's the equation of the curve. So if we can say that y equals x... Then we can say, for example, here, let's we can we can replace the y with x. You have x cubed 
minus x squared plus 4 times x cubed equals k. So we're going to have 4x cubed plus 5, uh, 4x cubed plus x cubed, that's 5x cubed minus x squared minus k equals 0. All right, so we have here another equation, okay? And we also know that at the point P, y equals x. So we can also say that for this equation, we can replace the x with y. And we can replace the y with x because um, at the point P where the gradient is equal to minus 1, at P, we can say y is equal to x, all right? So we can replace here also in this equation, I can replace the x the y with x, for example. So I can say that this is 4x squared plus 3x squared plus 2x minus 8x squared equals 0. So you have 4x squared plus 3x squared, that's 7x squared. In fact, that's 7x squared minus um, 8x squared, that's minus x squared. So you end up with 2x minus x squared equals 0. So we can say here that x times 2 minus x equals 0. So we can say x equals 0 and x equals 2. So x equals 2, that means also y equals 2. Right? So if x equals 2 and y equals 2, we can, we can in fact, we can just use this straight away. x and y are the same anyway. So I can, I can actually, in fact, I don't have to do that. The key was to use y equals x in this. All right? So we can now say that k is equal to, we know x is 2 and y is 2, so that's going to be uh, y cubed, this will be 2 cubed, minus 2 squared plus 4 times 2 squared times 2 okay and that's going to be k equals 8 minus 4 plus that's 4 times 4 which is 16 times 2 which is 32 that's going to give you 32 in altogether okay that's going to be 32 so you have 8 minus 4 which is 4 4 plus 32 is 36 so k is equal to 36 all right so there's part b we found the value of k. k is equal to 36. Is there a part c here? No, there isn't. So we found the value of k. k is equal to 36. Okay, so that question you have to think a little bit. All right. Um, so basically, we use the fact that the normal had in the at p, the normal at p had a gradient of one. Therefore, the tangent at p has a gradient of minus one. That means the gradient or dy dx at p is minus one. So we could set an equation with that. And we also know that y is equal to x. So we could just replace the x with y or the y with x. I replaced the y with x and I ended up with this equation here. Okay. And I could fi find out what um, x is. Therefore, we can find out what y is. At the point p, x is 2 and y is 2. This tells us about the, the values of x and y at p. This is all talking about at the point p. And therefore, when we know that, you know, x is 2 and y is 2, they, though, that's one point that's on this, on this curve. So this point satisfies the equation of the curve. So this point will make this equation true. Any point on the curve that we know is on the curve will make the equation true. So as we know this point is on the curve, it will satisfy the equation. Therefore, we can find the value of k by substituting x and y as 2. And we got the answer. And that's... The conclusion of question number five other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in the top right corner of the screen at the end of the video other questions from the topic of um i guess this is from differentiation of p4 implicit differentiation um in the, the link over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and on the top here you can watch the, a link to a video which tells you how to use my channel to find things you might be looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.